we are going to be looking at uh, red blood cells in this video. So uh, just as an introduction to red blood cells, where do they come from? They are formed in the part of our body known as the bone marrow. Uh, for example, if you were to eat a piece of chicken, let's say the drumstick, and you were to crack the bone, you would see that the inside of the bone has this reddish material. Um, and that is known as the bone marrow, and we also have that in our body. That is the bone marrow, and it is located within the bone structure. We as humans also have these as well. So the bone marrow itself is full of blood stem cells. Now, before we go into red blood cells, let's do a bit of revision for stem cells in chapter 5. Stem cells are just these types of cells that can continuously divide without any limits because if you remember they have an enzyme called telomerase which allows them to top up their telomeres uh, which gives them the capability to divide an unlimited amount of time then the blood stem cell also has another capability where it can give rise to specialized cells and one example is the blood stem cell can specialize to become the red blood cell so that is how red blood cells are formed. Red blood cells are formed in the bone marrow and they come from these particular cells known as blood stem cells. So if uh, they won't usually ask questions as to where the red blood cell comes from, but this is just an extra bit of knowledge that we should know, okay? That like our bones actually produce blood cells. They are not just there to protect our body or to support our body. Uh, or keep things in place, the bones also have capabilities of producing red blood cells. Now, when we talk about red blood cells, the first thing that we want to look at, we want to see the structure of the red blood cells. Now, the red blood cell itself, in terms of diameter, is 7 micrometers in diameter. We know this because, if you remember, it is almost the same diameter as the lumen of the capillaries, which will allow the red blood cells to move in the capillaries in a single line. So why is it important that the red blood cells are 7 micrometers and it moves in the capillary in a single line? It's so that it brings the oxygen to the cells as near as possible to allow easy diffusion to happen. Now, if we were to take the red blood cell and if we were to cut it, okay, obviously we can't cut a red blood cell, but imagine if the red blood cell were a slice of cake and I just cut it to look at its cross section, the cross section of the red blood cell will have a rather weird shape. And that shape of the red blood cell is referred to as a biconcave disc. Now, immediately students will ask me or students may wonder, what does the word biconcave mean? The word concave means curved inwards and the word bi means two, okay? So what that actually means is on two sides of the red blood cell, the surface curves inwards as we can see over there. Now why is the surface of the red blood cell curved inwards? How does this help? You see, to answer this question, we will have to compare three types of cells. Now I have a cell on the left which is just a normal cell that is not curved in any way. Uh, another cell in the middle, the cross section, where it's curved inwards, and another cell where it's curved outwards. So there is a normal cell, biconcave cell, and a biconvex cell, all right, where it's curved outwards. The first thing we want to cover is its total surface area. The normal cell will have a normal total surface area, but the biconcave cell will have an increased surface area because certain parts of its surface is curved inwards. That creates an extra surface area for the biconcave cell. The biconvex cell also has a larger surface area because the area is curved outwards, creating extra surface. So in terms of cells, we would like the cell to have a larger surface area. So we can eliminate out the normal cell. Now, between the biconcave cell and the biconvex cell, we, when we compare their volume, you will notice that the volume within the biconcave cell is lower and the volume within the biconvex cell is higher, as I have shaded in black, just to show you that how the space within the cells are different between the two of them. Okay. All right, 
So in terms of total surface area, both of them have larger total surface areas, but in terms of volume, the cell on the left has a lower volume and the cell on the right has a higher volume. Why do I care? The next thing we have to compare is the total surface area to volume ratio. We always want a higher total surface area to volume ratio for easier diffusion of substances. And in mathematics, if you want a high total surface area to volume ratio, the total surface area has to be high, but the volume has to be low. As an example, if we both assume that the surface area of both cells are 100 units, and if we also assume that the volume of the biconcave cell is 20 units and the volume of the biconvex cell is 60 units, again, these are all just assumptions. If we were to compare the ratio, for the cell on the left, the ratio is 5 to 1, but the cell on the right, the ratio is 5 to 3. Okay, so what that means is biconcave cells have a larger total surface area to volume ratio in general. And this is important because it allows easier diffusion of oxygen in and out of the cell. Okay? If the cell had too large of a volume, diffusion would have been extremely difficult because the total surface area to volume ratio would have been much smaller. And we don't want that to happen. So the red blood cell solves this problem by having its shape become a biconcave disc. Now, the next one we want to also look at about the red blood cell is the fact that it is flexible. The red blood cell can actually bend, okay, and when, it, when it's bent, it can change its shape, but then it will always go back and bounce back to its normal shape. So why is this good, that the red blood cell is able to change its shape depending on the situation? Because sometimes capillaries can be narrower than usual. Imagine if a capillary is too narrow, especially when you bend your legs. If the red blood cells were not flexible, what will happen is they will get stuck within the narrow space. And that's not good because it may lead to blood clots. And we don't want that to happen because it's quite dangerous. So the red blood cell, having a flexible shape, allows itself to squeeze through the narrow capillaries by being flexible. And after that, it will return back to its normal body shape. So flexible red blood cells allow it to change its shape, squeeze through narrow or tight junctions, and then just go back to its normal shape when necessary. That's what that means. Now, the last thing that we have to understand about the red blood cell is, is what goes on within the red blood cell. So inside a typical cell, we will have a nucleus, rough ER, Golgi apparatus, we'll have mitochondria and all these other organelles. However, inside a red blood cell, nope, it doesn't have any of those organelles at all. The reason it doesn't have a nucleus, it doesn't have endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes, mitochondria, Golgi body, none of that at all. The reason is because it wants to have more space to contain hemoglobin. And the more hemoglobin it has, the more oxygen it can transport. These are the four things that you will have to know about the red blood cells. The fact that, it's, that, the fact that it is 7 micrometers in diameter, it has a biconcave disc shape, it is flexible, and the fact that it has no nucleus, ER, ribosomes, or mitochondria. If a question asks you to describe the adaptation of red blood cells, then you just have to say it's, oh, it has a biconcave disc shape. But if the question says, explain the structure of the red blood cell, then you have to say it has a biconcave disc shape to allow a higher total surface area to volume ratio so that oxygen can diffuse in and out of the cell. Okay, The one on the left where I've highlighted are just their description. The one on the right for each of the description are their corresponding explanations.